remember. I heard actually two people. Good morning. It is Magnus Edmer here in Los Angeles with my daily dashboard update on August 7th. Sure, why not? 7th, 2012. Sorry to cut you off there. I didn't realize you were going to start talking as well, I you, did my introdu introduction. You had just asked me a question, so <laughs> the fact that I might start talking, yeah, to be expected, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. My brain is not working <laughs> this way these days. It may be sleep deprivation. Could be. But that's a discussion for later. Oh, yeah. Off camera. After a nap. Yeah, 72 degrees in Old Topanga Canyon. It feels like it's going to be 120 degrees today. It feels really hot and muggy. It is Tuesday, Caravan Tuesday. I have no idea what's um, what's uh, what came out, but I'm uh, I don't know. Are we going out for a couple of uh, lookies today? I believe we will do that. We'll see what's out there today. We'll go press the flesh and check out some new inventory and go refresh the week. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I have something in escrow right now, and a lot of interesting uh, things always comes up uh, in these inspections. Uh, now, can you explain a little bit and elaborate a little bit, Scott? You know, when you buy something, obviously it's as is. Where, where do you cross the line between as is and something that you couldn't have figured out? Well, as is takes into consideration everything that you know about the property. So it's whatever the buyer knows when they write their offer. For instance, if the buyer walks in and comments, wow, there's a big crack in the wall over there, and then they write an offer. Later on, if they ask for a credit to repair the crack, that's a little out of line because they should have factored in the cost of the crack when they wrote their offer. So the property is sold as is, but the buyer is allowed to make a request of the seller. So they do that by using a request for repairs and they can get a credit to fix something uh, or they can actually have the seller make repairs on there and uh, the seller can say yes they can say no they can give a counter offer for instance if the buyer says I need ten thousand dollars in credit the seller may say I'll give you thirty five hundred dollars in credit or the seller does not even need to respond and the buyer must still perform to the terms of the contract. So that is how that process works and um, it, it tends to work very well. So yes, they're sold as is, but the buyer still gets to make a request after they've discovered things that the seller didn't know was wrong with the house. house. Okay, so let's say I have the buyer and you have the seller. I make a request for repair for $10,000. And you, the seller's agent, respond uh, uh, by saying, no, we're not giving you anything. If I then come back and say, okay, how about $5,000 in a request for repair number two, what have I done? Well, when you <clears throat> come back with a second request, you have just reopened negotiation on the property. So what a lot of people don't know is when the buyer reopens the negotiation the seller can actually cancel that agreement and go with somebody else if they want to so if they have a backup offer in place the buyer has just given them the opportunity to cancel it and move ahead so the smart way to do it on the contingency removal form I'm sorry on the request for repairs form there is a little box that says that the buyer rescinds their previous request and is making a new request. So that basically pulls back the first request for $10,000 and uh, gives them the opportunity to make a, a different or a smaller request of the seller. That still sounds a little muddy water maybe, but uh, uh, so that would work then you think, huh? Yeah, that'll work. Um, just make sure that you've got good agents that know what they're doing and uh, you'll be in fine shape. Yeah, then that, that particular part I think is very interesting. I mean, and I bet you, if you asked a hundred agents today, I would not be surprised if only twenty five percent of those agents knew even knew about that. I would be surprised if twenty five percent knew about that. Uh, when I found out about it a few years ago, that if the buyer reopened the negotiation, the seller could cancel the escrow. Uh, my my first reaction was, really. 
And then the more I thought about it, the more I realized it makes a lot of sense. So, um, but my initial reaction was disbelief. I couldn't believe that that could happen, but it can, and it does all the time. There you go. That's a very important tip. If you are a buyer uh, or a seller for that matter out there, uh, make sure you have a good agent. And that's a good question for them. When you interview your agent, uh, why don't you ask that question and see if they know the answer. This is Magnus Detthelberg, ThePartnersTrust.com, signing out for my daily dashboard update in Los Angeles on August 7th, 2012. It is 73 degrees in Topanga Canyon as we're approaching the coast today. Beautiful Tuesday, Caravan Tuesday. Have a great day, everybody. And Scott.Carmody at ThePartnersTrust.com as well saying goodbye. Have a great day. Have a great day, LA. Enjoy our weather. Take care. Goodbye.